Welcome to Chat Tsunami. Hello everybody and welcome to another special episode of Chat Tsunami. I'm Sad Tsunami and joining me once again on this crazy bizarre adventure is my very good friend Blowfish Man TV. Blowfish, welcome back. I mean, got everyone knows who I am, so let's just start off the bloody stream, man. I do appreciate the pun. Um, <laughs> I see what you, yeah, I'm glad you saw that. I'm I see. You, saw that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we do love a good pun on this. Um, mm. I was going to say stream, but technically this will be going out to YouTube and Anchor and everything. So <laughs> you oh, know yeah. what I mean. The, the thought is there. I get it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> um, for all you Jojo fans out there, you have probably picked up. We are indeed um, going to be talking about part two this week of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, aptly titled Battle Tendency. And would it be safe to say that this is probably both of our, or at least one of our favourite parts in the series? Yeah, definitely, man. Like, uh, jo- Joseph was just completely different from Jonathan, and I was just so captivated by that. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I decided to keep watching more, you know? That's how it all starts in part two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I have to admit, this is, again, this is something I'm probably going to say throughout this episode, to say, oh yeah, that took me off guard, because a lot of this part took me off guard when I I mean when I first started watching it at least kind of flashing back to last time we were talking about part one part one we kind of agreed that it was it it was a good part and it was like a very good introduction to the series but at the same time it wasn't like it it wasn't like what the memes led you to believe about the series was (laughs) I mean other than a couple (laughs) of like Conodioda, Pluck Mm -hmm. As we, as we're actually <laughs> talking about just before we came yeah. on, um, mm. and all of those, but there wasn't really much in the way of it being groundbreaking. Then things start to take a really sharp turn, where we've still got like the vampires and we've got everything else kind of laid out, and yeah, we've got like quite a. Uh, how do I explain this without sounding like the weirdest podcaster in the world? We have got. I think that's impossible with Joe. Uh, Maybe most bizarre podcaster in the world. Quite, you're trying to get at. Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, like I mean, we've got three. Technically four, um, but we will get to that. Um, oiled up gods, let's just say that. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying until we get into the meat of this episode, because my god, there is a oh lot of god. meat in this part. Like four oiled up jacked gods just like doing poses to intimidate you. Yeah. I feel as if that is like the most like conservative way you can describe these guys 100 percent satsu 100 percent man <laughs> but yeah before we kind of jump in like do you want to give the audience listening at home a kind of brief overview about pretty much what battle tendency is about for sure man yeah. so uh it all starts off with uh jonathan's grandson uh, who is named Joseph Joestar. Uh, he is wildly different from Jonathan in a sense that he is not gentlemanly. He's, <laughs> you know, a loud mouth. He picks fights with whoever. Anyone can catch these hands. Mm-hmm. But the thing, what the cool thing about uh, Joseph is that he uses his brain a lot, whereas Jonathan was more of a brawn fighter, right? Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. that's the thing that took me, you know, captivated. But that got me captivated into uh, part two. So it's about, uh, so it all starts off with, you know, Joseph just doing his normal life, you know, chilling with... Uh, Arena, which is mm-hmm. his grandmother, aka Jonathan's wife. Uh, yes, she survived mm-hmm. from part one. And you know, uh, it's, they're just chilling. You know, normal day in in the neighborhood. You know, they're getting restaurant. Then eventually, they run into. For all those who have tuned into episode one, who can remember one of the Hamon fighters named Straitso, who is mm-hmm. like the lone Hamon survivor in part one. He runs into him, and Straitso straight up attacks him. But he also notices that you know there's something off with him, mm-hmm. and the fact and what's off with him is that. I believe he has like vampire powers, just like uh, just like Dio. So you know he ends up defeating him with uh, the use of his brain. Uh, but first of all, before before he even got into <laughs> yeah. that, he he whipped out a Tommy gun and yeah. shot the guy like a million times. And I'm just like, where, what? He was he had like a long coat on. Like where did this come from? I'm like, hmm. uh, what? And like he like it destroyed the restaurant. You know, and then he, eventually he defeats him by I think um, you know waiting till the sun comes out. Right? I believe that's yeah, how he yeah. defeats Straitso. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know. Straight so tells him he's just like oh there's something going on in I in a, in Germany, right? Because I think it was uh, during it was either during the World no, War Two or it like was after. Mex- was it after? No, or was it Mexico? Like, 
Yeah, I think it's during um, like the late 1930s. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's Mexico first where the Germans Mexico's are. Part, yeah, yeah because okay, they're, there we go. Because they're studying the presence, and I'm building up this, um, what I'm about to say. Yes, they're building up to the introduction of the Pillar Man, or a Pillar Man, Mm -hmm. which is weird, because see, if you're introducing, like, an antagonist, usually they introduce, like, one minor antagonist, and then they kind of, like, raise the stakes. With the Pillar Men, and again, we will get into that, but with the Pillar Men, they introduce one of them, and, yeah, yeah, you... I, I don't think I wasn't prepared. Were you prepared for? No, not <laughs> what at was all. to come? Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. Like that was literally me. Like when that happened, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, zoom to zoom to Mexico, and then there's this whole bit of you know Joseph sneaking into the the the, the German army base, and he does that by dressing up like a girl and just wrecking them with mm-hmm. you know the use of his brains. I believe he defeated like the guards with like wine bottles, like ham on filled yeah. wine bottles that he. He basically took the cork out and it was like ham on charge and they just yeah. got knocked the hell out. Like mm-hmm. it was like taking like a, a plastic bullet to the head, except probably harder, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So then he goes in, you know, he's only doing it because he uh, he finds out that uh, our boy Speedwagon was actually kidnapped by these guys. So mm-hmm. a little bit of context there as to why he went to, you know, Mexico to go uh, take on the German army that was holding him captive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then the first, I guess, Pillarman was introduced there because I think the German army kept interrogating Speedwagon saying like, hey, you were studying these pillars for a while. And speaking of Speedwagon, guys, what happened to him was he became a, a rich, a rich bachelor. Mm-hmm. And he decided to use like all of his money to help out the Joe Star family any way he can. Hence creating uh, the mm-hmm. Speedwagon Foundation. So that's the origin of part two for mm-hmm. the Speedwagon Foundation. So he's a, he's a rich dude, rich old dude at this point. And, you know, they kept interrogating him. They're like, so what are these pillars? Like, who are these men in these pillars? And he's just like, I'm pretty sure he didn't know, right, Satsu? Like, who who they were. He just saw them and was, yeah. like, studying if, them. That was, that was something like that, right? Yeah, because the way they link it to the first part is he has... He's there to kind of study the stone masks, which, yeah. if you remember part one, the stone masks are these, well, stone masks, you know, <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. what it says on the tin. Um, but it's these <laughs> masks that, when put on, they turn the user, or the wearer, rather, into vampires. So yes. he went down there and it turned out there was like a lot more sinister things going on when they mm-hmm. actually reached there. Mm-hmm. And just like, <laughs> just before we actually get on to like when the things go south. Keep in mind, this is like the first couple of episodes what you've yes. just described. I mean, first mm. of all, we're introduced to Joseph, who, of course, he gets his uh, wallet stolen by a, is it not just a street urchin um, called Smokey? Smokey, um, yes. I think he's like a street urchin. Yeah. And as soon as he goes to chase after him, he ends up coming around the corner and he sees this poor guy getting beat up by these like horrible, horrible policemen. He ends up um, defeating them, of course, with his ham on with a coke yeah. bottle. Which I have it was to a admit, coke bottle, yeah. yeah <laughs> which I I thought like sets the scene so well because like going back to what you said about Jonathan in part one, it's like he's very much Jonathan's very much a gentleman. He is like a paladin figure. He's you know he does the right thing. Right off the bat, <laughs> Joseph is like beating up policemen with uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> with like uh, <laughs> coke bottles and things. Yes, and then by the end of it, his only worry is not like him getting arrested or in trouble or anything, but it's like he's worried about getting in trouble with his grandmother. To which, yep, of course, Karina. Smokey is very yeah, just confused. Like, yep. why, why is he so scared of his grandmother? And of course, you find out later, like, who his grandmother is and everything. Mm-hmm. And then, as you were saying, Blowfish, like, they end up going to Mexico because they find out the speed wagons getting held there. Um, yep. You've got the Bugs Bunny moment where, <laughs> where basically you've got the German soldiers kind of, you know, like, they're being very, you know, disgusting and very yep. you know the like caricatures yeah. of like villains yep. at this point mm-hmm. like Pretty leering much. at women and things like that and then mm-hmm. joseph as i said bugs bunny moment where he basically cross dresses to try and like flirt his way back <laughs> And it just doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. And keep in mind, this is still where Araki, the creator of the series, was drawing everybody, like all the main characters at least, really jacked. 
compared to the women, like the women yeah. characters are very, you know, slim and like they're not bulky. Let's say compared to the other ones, like mm, see when you are. think of unrealistic body proportions. <laughs> Yes. Just look at any <laughs> part one to three. Like look at any main male character, and you'll see what we mean by like. <laughs> Jack, un- like oh, oh my just, god, it is absolutely ridiculous. But the fact he's just dressed up like that, and of course that obviously it doesn't work. And yeah, he ends up yeah knocking them out with I think it's wine or tequila or something. Um, again with his ham on, he's got a real habit of doing that, doesn't he? At the very beginning. <laughs> Like, just yes. knocking people out with bottles. And then, Pretty much. And then, yeah, as you were saying, he ends up getting in to rescue Speedwagon. And is it fair to say that this part just speeds along, like, mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. faster than part one at times? A hundred percent. A hundred percent, my friend. Yeah. Like, I feel like uh, when Araki was writing this part, he looked at the mistakes he made in part one. He's just like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And decided to, you know, like, improve on them. So it was good pacing, in my opinion, for part two. Like, it was it was not, you mm-hmm. know, oversaturated with, like, filler arcs. Not, you know, mm-hmm. calling out a, uh, a certain anime. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, he, he built on his mistakes. You know, the story wasn't, was linear, but not, like, super linear to the point where it wasn't interesting, right? Yeah. But, yeah, like, I feel like the pacing was just very, very good in the show. It was, it was incredible. And, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I totally agree with what you were saying there about, like, he fixes his mistakes because again like as i said like part one was good at kind of laying the foundations of like Mm -hmm. the world and things and i think without that i don't know how well part two would have done if we were just throwing in to i think it still would have stood up but i think people would be a lot more confused and be like okay why is this guy in the 1930s shooting coke bottles at the police (laughs) (laughs) dressing up as tequila joseph Um, oh tequila (laughs) joseph and it, yeah, best girl. <laughs> best girl, I agree. Best girl, you know, forget yeah. forget all these like uh, beautiful looking uh, yeah. women who these turn out pre- to be moms, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, these pretenders. Let's face it, they they Pretend. don't <laughs> they don't hold a candle to Tequila Joseph. Okay, <laughs> never, never, ever. <laughs> Fun fact, apparently, and I was watching like a YouTube video of, I think it was like knockoff Jojo merch you can get, and God. apparently you can actually get a Tequila Joseph um, mouse pad. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, that's yeah. hilarious! It's oh so my god! Funny. I just remember somebody getting it and just reviewing it and being like, "Yep, this is a thing. This is yeah, this pretty is much. Jones. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> so yeah, speaking of you know, like I don't even know where I was going to go with that, but <laughs> moving on. Um, so yeah, they end up going into or joseph ends up going into the facility in mexico where they find the german soldiers of course experimenting with a very confusing being known as a pillar man and i have Mm -hmm. to admit like if you watch the introduction to this show you do see like there's three pillar men and you think (laughs) okay this is the first one where are the other ones gonna come from yeah pretty much right and yeah kind of spoilers turns out there's a lot of pillar men that just aren't there um yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that that that's the opt word yeah being yet <laughs> they certainly yeah, build on yeah. it yeah they, they do build on it which um, is nice mm-hmm. and then of course it kind of links loosely to the in fact what i like about this part is it does build on part one's like lore in the sense mm-hmm. that it talks about vampires, it talks about those kind of creatures, but it also talks about like the Hamon tribes and everything, and yeah, yeah. how this power has been so integrated, so much so into the world that there's like tribes, there's culture behind it. I thought that was really interesting, and I thought that was like mm-hmm. a really neat touch. Yeah. Of course, I say that like you know the rich culture and everything, and then you look at Joseph Joestar, which as much <laughs> as I love his character. Yeah, he's a bit of a yeah. goof. <laughs> he's a bit he's of a goofball. hundred percent a slacker and a goofball, oh. but that's why we love him. You know oh, absolutely! I mean? Oh um, my god, because he's just very relatable in that sense. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm kind of like that in the sense that yeah. like sometimes I slack off and I, I I fuck around too much, and then you yeah. know this, then it happens, and then when I actually try, you're like, damn, I'm yeah. actually pretty sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> that's literally every Joseph. Time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it is. It's like. Going back to part one, just kind of briefly, it's like every time there was a new villain, they would do the typical show then, <gasps> oh no, we're got, you know, oh, we got to defeat oh, no. him. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> compared to part, um, you know, compared to part two, like Joseph, what I like about it is, although Joseph comes across as very nonchalant and mm-hmm. very, oh, look at me, you know, oh, I'm going to defeat him, 
you can tell as well that he's kind of calculating in his mind yes. what he's going to do. Like, <laughs> as, as, as you said before, when he finds his, like, old friend, or not his old friend, but, like, family friend, um, the old Hamon user that turns himself into a vampire, yeah. and there's so many moments where you think, oh, God, Joseph's done for, and mm-hmm. you just don't know what to expect with Joseph, and I think that's, like, the best thing about this character, because it's mm-hmm. like, as you were saying before, it's like he's fighting him and this uh, straights nearly kills him by, mm-hmm. I don't know, is it laser eyes or something? He uses, I can't remember what he does, but he like fires something at him and he hits a mirror, which is like kind of positioned, which I thought was really clever. But then of course Joseph brings out a Tommy gun out of nowhere. And just yeah. starts shooting. <laughs> like, y- you can imagine like Jonathan or any of the other characters no. after this doing that. Like, he just... <laughs> He just comes out of nowhere. And he uses, like, a shot glass as well to, like, deflect yeah. a bullet and things. Like, just Which all these crazy. really... And, again, apologies for the pun, but just this bizarre twist of fate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it always comes out on top, and you don't know what to expect, and that is definitely the highlight. And, again, as I said, this only takes part in, the, like, what, first couple of episodes? Mm-hmm. Until we're introduced to the first pillar man who we realise that Joe... Uh, not Jonathan, Joseph, is completely underprepared for. Like yeah, he, outmatched and everything. Yeah. He nearly gets his arse kicked, like, severely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even if it wasn't, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but if it wasn't for a certain German soldier that... Yeah. So, the name of the soldier, and keep this Stroheim. name in mind, guys. Yep, Stroheim. <laughs> keep this yep. name in mind, because he will come back. Yeah, he ends up helping uh, Joseph try to defeat this new pillar man, who is very similar in a way to, like, vampires, in the sense that he is also weak to the sun. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, he's got, like, different powers. Like, he mm-hmm. doesn't really pull anything from his backside, at least yeah. none that I remember. I could be wrong. I could be misremembering. Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking more of like Dio when in part one he just suddenly has laser eyes for yeah, no reason. That was... Yeah. <laughs> and I, know I have laser eyes. What? <laughs> it's like, okay, fair enough. It's like, you're a head, but yeah, okay. you're a head, but now you've got laser <laughs> eyes, much. sure. But yeah. yeah, it ends up kind of flash forward. He ends up, in fact, before he defeats him, I think the Pillar Man absorbs himself into Stroheim, doesn't he? To yeah. which Stroheim um, is having none of that, and mm-hmm. pulls out basically, I think what the British Army would have called a potato masher, aka a huge ass grenade. And... Oh yeah, the big grenade I forgot about <laughs> And he just pulls the bin, and you're like, Jesus Christ! Yo, you're like, Stroheim is He's serious. Oh, That's the thing. He is yeah. serious. He's like, not willing to go down. Yeah, because right off the bat, you think, okay, this is when the hero kind of negotiates and thinks, how am I going to get out of this one? How am I going to save this guy? He just, uh, yeah, Stroheim just pulls out a grenade and is like, Joseph, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> and blows himself up. And it's like, good lord. And through like a couple of other action scenes, they end up um, turning him to stone yep. by, of course, getting him to stand in the sunlight, which... It's a very good action scene, I have to say. It is. And it's a good it introduction and kind of foreshadowing into what's about to come. And mm-hmm. then, <laughs> which, yeah, which is... I'm a little bad. Yeah. And again, like, I know I keep saying this is the first couple of episodes, but I can't stress this enough how fast <laughs> this show goes. It goes from it zero to a hundred. It does. It's, it, it's like, it's not in a bad way, though, is it? Like... In the best way possible. Yeah, it's not like it goes from 1 to 100 and you're suddenly lost, like, oh, what's happening? Oh, I don't get it. Okay, I'm not following. I mean, technically you are asking those questions, but in all the right ways. (laughs) You're like saying, oh, this is so cool. What's happening? I don't care. Yeah, like, after that, um, the main characters, of course, get taken to Italy, where we are introduced to quite possibly a very, I I was going to say, like, a very good, like, fan favourite. Would you say Caesar is quite... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I liked Caesar, hell. Yeah. yeah, He's awesome. So Caesar is a Zeppeli. So Mm -hmm. if you remember from part one, of course, he is related... He he is related to Baron Zeppeli, isn't he? He is. He's his grandson, I believe. Grandson, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. I I was just wondering if that was my head canon slash fan fiction. (laughs) I'm pretty sure he's just like... Yeah. <laughs> Slash fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just out myself there. 
<laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it must be real. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, of course, he is a very... I, I don't want to like turn him into a stereotype, but he's very like much a romantic, very smug. Maybe he's not smug. <laughs> He's yeah, fuck boy. Let's be essentially, honest. Essentially, I love yeah. him, but come on. Man. Yeah, essentially, <laughs> yes. I, I was going the diplomatic route, but you know what I mean. <laughs> he is. He's very like every woman he sees. You know, he's like, oh, yeah. look at me. And yeah. again, he's very similar to Joseph in the sense that he has a lot of insight, I suppose, into when he's fighting. No. So, like mm. when he's fighting Joseph. Um, they are both kind of equally matched. So yeah. Caesar basically uses the power of bubbles. Technically mm-hmm. it's Hamon, but let's face it, he's Bubble Boy. He's uh, Bubble Boy, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And they're both like evenly matched because he has tricks up his sleeve, Joseph has tricks up his sleeve, and they're both like, you know, going back and forth and everything. And they basically, the reason they're in Italy is because they need to find the other pillars, which yeah. the, of course, the Germans have found as well. <laughs> trust the of Germans. Of course they did. It's the German. It's yeah. always the Germans. I don't know. <laughs> trust, trust them in that time period to be a bit of a yeah. pain. <laughs> yep. I, I use yep. that in the lightest <laughs> way possible but yeah it's quite interesting because I can't remember is this like see after we're introduced to Caesar in fact no sorry before we're introduced to Lisa Lisa so sorry I was going to go on to that but I think before that they go to the pillar men or to see where the pillar men are and yep. this is when you get the scope of like how bad things are going to get in this part, at least for the main characters, because, of course, you have three pillar men instead of one, and you can tell, mm-hmm. like, how much carnage and chaos, like, one pillar man can do. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, like, a guy had to blow himself up just to get him out of his body. It's like, how yeah. much more are they, like, they're not going to blow themselves all up just to get these, you know, to get these <laughs> pillar men Mm-hmm. Go on and be like, yep, end of part. We're going to do a Jonathan. Blow up the boat. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah pretty much. <laughs> but of course they get there and I can't remember how he gets released. Um, do you remember? Uh, how what, the Pillar Men Yeah, the released? first one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, From what I can remember, it was like, um, didn't you have to have like an item of some sort to release them? I think it was, so. it was something yeah, like it that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, for anyone in like the comments, feel free to tell us because <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like Joseph, we're not the most prepared. But hey, we we oh. make it work. We make it work. Oh you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like we're, we're gonna go with the fact that you know, in order to release a pillar man, you have to have like some sort of item. Mm-hmm. I believe it might have been a stone mask. I can't remember. Yeah. So uh, we're zooming to the part where you know we see these three pillar men mm-hmm. and how much they can do. One pillar man was already enough. Three are much stronger than the one that was mm-hmm. mentioned earlier that Stroheim and Joseph had to fight. Yeah. Um, these guys are like on a whole different level. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Joseph and Caesar and uh, Speedwagon, they're in trouble, guys. Long story mm-hmm. short. So <laughs> the first thing that happens is that, you know, like uh, Caesar tries to go after, I believe it was Wamu. Was it Wamu? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Caesar goes after Wamu, who is like uh, one of the three pillar men who was released, mm-hmm. one of the main villains of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. He gets his ass kicked, like straight up. Oh, like, yeah, I think yeah. I think like he cut him, he cut him somewhere, like like close to his face. Was it like his eye or something? I, I believe yeah. he like temporarily made Caesar blind. Yeah, That's how powerful not, this guy was. Yeah, does he yeah. not cut his eyelid or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so so like, Caesar's down for the count. That, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's down for the count because like his eyes are messed up. And then Joseph tries by oh. doing like stupid things like and introducing the Hammond clackers and all oh. that. Yeah, and like do you, you know, want to doing like yeah, tricks. I, I was just gonna say, do you want to like explain what the Hamon clackers are? <laughs> so guys, you know that like little um you know that little uh thing that sort of tells time, I guess, you know, where there's like five like uh balls uh-huh. attached to like strings and it's like and like you know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about, right? Satsu? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. no, I know. Yeah. So they look like that, just two of them though. And you know, he's doing all these like He's doing all these like things that you would do with nunchucks, essentially, right? And then eventually, like he hits himself on the head. And he's just like ah, and then like Wamu doesn't take him seriously. He's like, yeah, I'm wasting my time. No, fuck yeah. this guy, right? <laughs> he's like, all right. And he tells like Cars and SCDC, the other two pillar men, they're like, yeah, let's go. Like this guy's mm-hmm. wasting time. Let's just destroy the world, right? Mm-hmm. And I think uh, after that, you know, Joseph didn't like that, mm-hmm. so he decides to whip the Hammond clackers right at Wamu's head, mm-hmm. and it actually does something. Like, there's a bit of damage going on. Like, he dented his head, like, quite yeah. literally. Like, the body okay. horror stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Wong was just like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I underestimated you clearly. You know what? Yeah, I'll give you, like, a little bit of a chance. Like, is that cool, Cars and ACDC? They're like, yeah, sure, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they fight for a bit. Joseph gets 
utterly destroyed because yeah. he was not prepared for this. I think he gets like one or two good shots in, and then Wamu's like, oh, you're good, but I'm better, essentially. Like, oh, he yeah. would Uno reverse him like every single step, right? Uh, so Joseph gets his ass whooped, and it looks like Joseph's literally dead because I'm pretty sure he used like one of his most powerful attacks on him. Like it was a, like a wind attack or some something like that, right? Oh yeah. And yeah. it felt like you know the wind was literally like slicing you open. You know, mm-hmm. you know, and like anime characters have like those wind attacks, or like anime characters with wind abilities that you know they swing their fan so hard that you know it feels like the wind that mm-hmm. you know gets swung by the fan it feels like a bunch of like blades going at you, right? Yeah. It was that yeah. sort of attack. You know, Joseph's down for the count. And he's just like, okay, now that we're done here, let's go destroy the world, boys. Essentially, <laughs> what he said to like cars and ACDC is like, ain't no one stopping us, right? Yeah. And then, like, you know, Joseph is like, he's punking him. He's like crawling away and he's like, he feels his presence and he's like, wait, maybe I didn't do the job right. And he looks back and, you know, Joseph's just like playing dead. And he's yeah. like, no, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Okay, right? Yeah. So that goes on for a bit. And then he's just like, the fuck are you doing, you idiot, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, you're just provoking him at this point. You're going to die, right? And then uh, it gets to a point where, like, uh, Joseph finds this <laughs> random, like, uh, I guess a mine cart, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe mm-hmm. it was a mine cart. Oh, no, I see. He yeah. gets into this mine cart, and then um, he, he uh, turns it on, essentially. He turns on the mechanism to let it go. And then Wamu notices that. He's just like, mm-hmm. oh, so you're not dead. Okay, let me properly finish you, right? Yeah. So then, you know, Caesar and uh, Speed Riding's like, oh, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And then Caesar finally sees, like, Joseph's true potential as, as to why he's a good fighter and a good person. He's just like, oh. He's getting him away from us so that we can escape. How valiant, right? It's like, okay, I have like a bit more respect for you now, Joseph, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the point where Caesar starts respecting Joseph. He's like, okay, like I see what he's doing and wow, thank you, right? Mm -hmm. So he's distracting Wamu by going down the cart and then Wamu catches up, obviously. And I think at one point, you know, like Wamu's just like, ah, I got you now, bitch. And he's just like, or do you? And he had like an explosive on on him, I think. And that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> like, what happened with Stroheim, yeah. <laughs> it like temporarily works for like a good 10 seconds. Then he's oh, yeah. back, mm-hmm. essentially, right? Mm-hmm. So then they're outside, you know, the, they're outside of like, a, of, I guess it was a, a, I guess it was like some sort of like yeah, underground but... place where the where the pillars were. Something like that, right, mm-hmm. Satsu? Yeah, because it's and, like an excavation underneath yeah, them, exactly. the city. Yeah. And then, you know, Joseph's like hurt bad. Like he's pretty mm-hmm. much very close to dying. And, you know, Wamu goes up to him. He's just like, you know what? You're not half bad. And like all the other pillar men are there, I'm pretty sure, right? Oh, yeah. And he's uh, and he's just like, listen, I know he. T- I, th- I think he tells the other two this. Uh, SCDC and Car. He's like, hey, um, is it cool that we hold off on our plans for a bit? They're like, why? And he's just like, I like this guy. He points to Joseph. He's he essentially says, I like him because he fights differently compared to those I've fought, and I want this guy to fight him. I want to fight him at his full strength, and by that I mean you need to train more. I'll give you thirty days, and then we'll fight, and then. We'll see, we'll see like how strong you can really get, right? And then Joseph's like, yeah, yeah, I'm down, essentially. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, yeah. okay, good. Okay, good. We're, we're, he's like, in his head, he's like, okay, okay, situation dissolved. We got time, not a lot, but, you know, still, mm-hmm. we got time to like, you know, get better, at, get better at fighting them. And then he's just like, oh, just, you know, just for some, um, what was it? I think leverage, I believe, is the word yeah. I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just for some leverage, uh, Joseph. Uh, take this ring. Will you like? He essentially is just like, will you marry me? As a joke, yeah. right? Not as like a joke, but like it, right. it sort of went like that. And he's like, what? And then you see him just jab this ring into his heart. I believe it was around his heart. Yeah, not yeah. his heart, but like some part of his heart, right? Because yeah, the... just like right. He's just like. Mm-hmm. So what that ring will do to you is that if you break our, if you don't defeat us within thirty days, and or if you break our promise in any way, you're dead. There's going to be a poison that'll instantly kill you. It'll dissolve. And then Caesar's just like, oh, fuck, right? Mm-hmm. And then I see Deez is like, oh, good idea. And he does the same thing to Joseph. Yeah. And like puts a, puts a ring in, like, his windpipe, I think, right? Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. And then it's like, same thing. Like, you know, if, if, you, if you don't defeat me within, like, 30 days, that's your timeline. Mm-hmm. You're dead. So now Joseph, like, doubly screwed himself at this point, right? Oh, totally. And then they all yeah. go away. And they're like, okay, yeah, uh, you guys train. Uh, we'll see you in 30 days, okay, boys? Pretty much. <laughs> they yeah. disappear. And then Caesar's just like, what the fuck did you do? And he's just like uh so i sort of promised that i'd fight them in 30 days mm-hmm. i mean it gives us time and she's like what are you talking about 30 days is not enough time time to defeat guys like this right mm-hmm. and he's just like yeah <laughs> that's pretty much joseph right oh yeah <laughs> and then after that he's just like you know what uh, caesar's just like okay like i respect what you did so i sort of have an idea of how we can do how we can kind of pull this off and he's like what do you mean we're gonna have to train and we're gonna have to train hard and i know just the person to go to for this right mm-hmm. And then it ends with Joseph literally saying the episode like, oh, no, hard work and training. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's where the episode yeah. ends. And I love that, yeah. right? It really says and a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> it, a lot. it does say yeah. a lot about the kind of person Joseph is, right? He's yeah. just like, fuck, I'm good, but I'm lazy, right? Yeah. And then um, 
you know, uh, if you'd like to continue on with the next episode, what happens with that? So that's our introduction to our big bads of, oh, of yeah. the series. Like, yeah. that's how terrifyingly powerful these guys are. Yeah. We haven't I, even, we've only seen one of them fight at this point. We don't know how strong the other two are. Yeah. But shit, if one could just do that much damage to Joseph, to our, to our main boys, who knows, right? Who knows how strong the other two are, right? Because, I mean, that's yeah. Quite- yeah, it's quite interesting how they deal with the Pillar Men, because, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, it's still, like, bizarre, and again, bizarre, <laughs> but it's still bizarre how they are, like, these, again, jacked, like, muscly gods, essentially. and Boiled up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You would honestly like. I think. I, I think when I was researching, like, um, for this episode, I heard mm-hmm. that they were based off of um, either Roman statues or something like Probably. that. Yeah, you know, they were like based that. off of those kind of like sculptures and things. And I can mm-hmm. see where it's. Yeah, I can see where Iraqi was coming from, but I think if, like, a Roman statue was walking in real life, <laughs> I, th- mm. I think I would be a bit worried. <laughs> I would be terrified. Yeah. I mean, the fuck? That'd yeah. be me. <laughs> I mean, these guys are huge. I mean, even compared they're, they're to big, Joseph, big. like, they are they are mm. big boys, essentially. They are. And, I mean, you see a couple of really interesting, like, character development scenes. Except for, mm-hmm. I have to admit, I, th- I feel as if AC... So, there's three of them, as you were saying. There's Wamu, mm-hmm. there's ACDC, and there's Cars. I feel as if yeah. ACDC gets the least amount of development. Yes, I, I 100% agree with because that. Because later on, um, and I'll touch mm-hmm. on it, like in a second but uh, like later on joseph ends up fighting and of course defeating acdc but Mm -hmm. the only real character development we see from him is that he's like quite volatile with his emotions yeah Yeah. but that's about it really like after that you can see he's a bit conniving and things but compared to like wamu who you can tell he's like very honorable and everything very lawful evil uh, villain like someone you gotta respect due to that warrior's code he has right i love it i love i love wamu for that reason and Cars I'm a bit conflicted about because on the one hand Cars is a sneaky wee shite. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god, that's an understatement, that like, guy. He Ooh. is. But at the same time he saves a dog from getting run over. And I feel Does as he? if I think so, or it's some kind of animal. Do you not remember oh. that scene where they're in Switzerland? This is kind of flashing forward. Oh, yeah. oh right, 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 like, right, right, right. Yeah, there, yeah. There's like a dog or, I, I don't know if it's a dog or a rabbit or something. I think, it, I'm sure it's a dog that's about to get run over. And then Cars mm. like chops the car in half so that yeah. the dog doesn't get run over. And I think that's very sweet. <laughs> that is like the only Jojo character that's gone out his way to save a dog. Help so a it's dog. like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, I, I feel so conflicted whether i'm supposed to hate this guy or not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's like he's the only one i feel <laughs> but yeah so of course as you were saying sorry um of course caesar and joseph say that they need to train which then introduces quite possibly like one of the best like characters of this part that Mm. of course being their soon to be mentor lisa lisa and i'm not just saying that for personal reasons (laughs) i I agree (laughs) like i genuinely think that at least uh, i'll get to that when we you know when we talk about like the last fight scene but like i do feel as if her character is really well done for a lot she of is. the part there's one or two she kind is. of blips in the writing but yeah like the majority mm-hmm. of it she's shown as being a very competent hamon user she's mm-hmm. like very talented you know she's got a good yep. grasp of what she can do and everything you know she's mm-hmm. knowledgeable like that thing i swear i'm not fanboying over a fictional character <laughs> i mean it's, it's, you know. it's okay if you are but like yeah. i don't blame you for fanboying yeah of course <laughs> She's just so cool, okay? She's just She's so, so fucking cool. cool, guys. Like, yeah. honestly, for those who want to start part two, like, mm-hmm. it's, there's a reason why I call her the JoJo Bay. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's I mean. It's like, have you seen that episode of The Simpsons where Homer's got the, like, poster up on the wall and it says, like, do it for her? And it's like yeah. pictures of Maggie. That's like yeah, me, yeah. but instead it's like pictures of Lisa Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> do it for her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, of course, they get mm. introduced to her and she basically teaches them how to use Hamon. Not before mm. um like attaching a basically a weird like breathing mask, like a bane yeah, it's mask. Like a bane mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I was thinking too. Uh, <laughs> 
and it basically makes Joseph not Better unable, breathing. yeah, like not unable to breathe, but like kind of, yeah, harder to breathe, so he can't use his ham on the same. And then, flashing forward for training, she shoves him down a greasy hole. Trust me, it works in context. And yes, yeah. she, <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, a very greasy. Yeah. Hole. <laughs> basically, it's like this, like. I don't know if it was like custom built. I don't know what what, what the purpose of this is other than Hamon training. But it's basically mm. this whole that they find it really hard to use the Hamon because like the walls are greased up and everything. But then of yeah. course there's kind of like an 80s montage after that where yeah. they start climbing and everything and they manage to get out thanks to, you know, them both thinking things yeah. through. And then exactly. they come across two other Hamon users that assist Lisa Lisa and they basically say oh we're gonna train you as the days go on acdc basically ambushes joseph on Mm -hmm. what should be one of his lessons and yeah i think it was like the final lesson but for both of them right because joseph was supposed to be trained by one of lisa lisa's guys and then caesar the other dude right Mm -hmm. yeah and then acdc killed uh, a lisa lisa's dude and he's just like ah your training's with me essentially yeah yeah (laughs) or like your final test is with me pretty much right and then Mm -hmm. eventually thanks to like I don't know, like, thread magic, I want to say. <laughs> yeah, that's the easiest way to explain. Not, yeah. not really thread either. It's very, yeah. I guess it's like, it's 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 body horror, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very body horror yeah. magic. Yeah, it's basically they're standing on spikes trying not to basically impale themselves. And yeah, yeah. eventually he overcomes them with Hamon. And he basically like yeah he he overcomes him and he's like okay that's one pillar man down and that's one ring off my windpipe (laughs) yeah he gets the poison he has the cure drinks it yeah Yeah. but then acdc comes back again as a parasite this is the only bit i'm kind of i mean there are like kind of small bits where i'm like i don't know if i like this wasn't he like attached to like joseph's back like he was like not not his back yeah he was hiding somewhere on joseph not like inside of him but like to be fair see if i was a parasite i would probably latch onto the biggest thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Me oh, too. Like, like that's how like... you live as a parasite, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and eventually moves on to Suzy Q. So Suzy Q, we haven't really talked ah. about her yet, but mm-hmm. she is a like assistant to Lisa Lisa, just basically a housekeeper, I think. And yeah, basically he ends up taking over her body mm-hmm. and she basically takes the so so this is another plot point that's coming up but this is when they introduce a ruby called the stone of i think in the dub they call it uh, ajax but i'm sure it's yeah, pronounced like, like ajax or something or mm-hmm. that's how you usually say it but i think they all say the stone of ajax and it's like okay you know what fine like, let's <laughs> fine fine we'll go let's, let's okay, go we'll, we'll but keep going <laughs> so yeah it's like they have this ruby that will basically give the uh, pillar men like more power basically mm-hmm. a, a glorified chaos emerald let's face it and yes they yes 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 basically sorry my mind is in sonic again i know don't worry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So basically, she ends up mailing it to Switzerland, which I have to admit was like you know fast shipping because that 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 gets sent away immediately. And mm. fortunately, she gets um, they they manage to defeat ACDC without killing Susie Q. And mm. of course, the duo or trio, sorry, I should say. So it's Caesar, uh, Joseph, and of course, um, if I know, sorry, it's four of them. I Lisa Lisa, and then it's the other Hamon dude. <laughs> Whose yeah, name the, I the, cannot he's, remember. He's kind of there. He's yeah, just he's just there. He's the fourth wheel in an otherwise perfect, you know, ensemble. Perfect trio, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's something that I actually didn't realise up until I rewatched it, or rewatched bits of it. But apparently, Lisa Lisa uses a thing called Hamon Hypnosis on mm. Suzy Q. Yeah, it's just a weird power. It's like, do you know what it mm. reminds me of? It reminds me of, see, when they're escaping in part one mm. and they use the leaf as a paraglider. It's like one of those unexplained Hamon abilities where it's yeah. like, okay, you know what? Fine, fine. You want your hypnosis? You can you can have it as Hamon. It's almost as if Iraqi's like a vexed dungeon master for D&D. He's like, you know what? See if you want that um, power up, you can take it. Fine. Just Pretty take much, it. yeah. <laughs> Just Pretty much. And of course, yeah, that leads them to Switzerland where they bump into the Germans again. And a very familiar figure, of course, um, known as Schroheim. Which, oh, I'm... which I'm he... sure that's how he yells his name, right? 
Oh yeah, yeah. He has he like extra... yells it to the top of his lungs. <laughs> he is so <laughs> extra in this. He is just like he yells everything, talking about so the extra. Gl- I yeah. fucking love it. It's oh amazing. Talking about the glory of like German engineering and things like yeah. that. Okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, German technology <laughs> is amazing, and you know amazing. all of this. <gasps> And it turns out that, as we said before, he blew himself up. So you might be thinking, if you, if you haven't watched this, you might be thinking, why why is he here? What, what happened? And the, and the answer is quite simple. Cyborgs. Yeah, that's it. They, they, they basically, <laughs> actually, no. yeah, that, actually, that, no. you you would think I'm just like being facetious, but honestly, it's like, yeah, they just put cyborg parts on them, and that's it. And you're like, hmm. okay. I, I, I'm down. I'm down. This is this is great. And of course, he's got like <laughs> he's got like a Gatling gun that comes out his yeah. stomach and everything. And, yeah. and see, this is I the thing though. That. It's like he doesn't. Po- so this is the thing about JoJo as a whole. Like they don't pose normally. There's a reason the phrase JoJo pose is used so often because he like has his hands I, I can't believe I'm describing this but he basically has <laughs> his head his hands in his head um his hips thrusted forward and this yep. huge gatling gun coming from his stomach is the most I, I don't I don't even have an adjective for it. It's just <laughs> it's just yeah, a Jojo I don't pose. Know mean, I, I don't know how to describe yeah, it. Either. It's like I'm not even gonna yeah like if if you want to see what I mean either watch the episode or just look up Roheim pose, and you'll know what I mean. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, of course, when they're there, they end up getting ambushed by um, Cars, who is the third uh, pillar man. And basically, there is a like kind of back and forth where they're trying to get this uh, ruby, this stone. The pillar men have it, then Joseph has it, and then Joseph uses like a really clever like Hamon technique when he like nearly falls off the edge of this cliff but because it's like Switzerland and it's all snowy he grabs like a couple of icicles and he chains them all together using ham on and I have Mm. to admit like this is something that I usually bring up when I'm talking about action and you know shows and things but I adore it when like they use their environment to full effect and I feel as if that is like it's just such a small thing but at the same time it's like it's really good that they kind of thought about how he was going to get out of of it like he didn't just grab mm. a random rock or anything or he didn't like you know jump off at the last second or by dumb luck he actually thought it out and he got like yeah he basically as you were saying at the beginning he used his brain rather than his brawn yeah. and that is like a trait that definitely defines joseph compared to some of the other um joe Legend, stars yeah. out there yeah but then of course this leads to quite possibly one of the moments that really took me by surprise again and i know i've said this a lot of times but this really devastated me that of course being the fight with Caesar and Wamu. Wamu. Yeah. Yeah, basically they find where Wamu is and of course it's revealed that Caesar has daddy issues. Right. That, no, hardcore, that's, like, yes. that's the most abridged way I can define that. <laughs> define he Caesar's does, character. Does. But the reason for that is because Caesar or his dad rather left he went out to get um, some milk and he never returned but it turned out he was. <laughs> true though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. But I, I, I just didn't expect you to say that. But, keep going. <laughs> but yeah, when like eventually he's walking in the streets and he's like, "Papa, it is you!" and he runs after him, and then of course he sees him and like where the old pillar men like wall is like where they initially mm. found them and they yeah he basically he nearly touches the wall and i think his dad saves him at the last second becoming the second zeppeli of course to be sacrificed there could have been more mm. before this but let's face it this is like yeah, this is the yeah. zeppeli kill count this is like number two yeah. and yeah it ends up in kind of a rage Caesar wants to kind of avenge his father and everything which I have to admit kind of comes out of left field but Mm -hmm. I suppose it gives like a basic that's why he wants to rush in and of course he fights him and he really like does a lot of damage to Wami doesn't he? He nearly like kills him he had him, he had him at one point yeah, it's just, it's because he jumps in front of him. So sorry, basically, before I go on, it's like the building that they're about to go in is like a huge manor house, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something like that. it ends up he manages to get some like sunlight into the um, 
like the lobby, I want to say. You know, the just basically the main yeah. greeting area. Mm-hmm. And exactly. he pummels Wamu just about, and he nearly gets him. But because his shadow covers up the sun that's hitting Wamu, yeah, yeah. Caesar gets his ass kicked. And you think, yep. okay, what, what's going to happen next? You know, what mm-hmm. what could they possibly do? And then you see the old Zeppeli power up, where yep. he starts yelling. He starts saying, you know, Joseph, yep. this is the last of my ham on. And okay. every, yeah. you know, like a very dramatic, typical anime initially. And then yep. it kind of sets in that, oh my God, he's doing the thing his granddad did. <laughs> it's like, pretty much, oh yeah. no. And yeah, oh, no. no. <laughs> And yeah, you see this bubble like of blood, which yep, a bit disgusting, but you know, it's it mm. makes sense <laughs> in it the does. context. And of course, it floats away towards toward well, just towards the door, really. And mm. yeah, so sorry before that, before like he ends up meeting a horrible fate, he grabs the ring which has the antidote for uh, Joseph's poison, yep. and he sticks that he ties it like to his bandana. And puts yeah. it in his Hamon bubble before he gets like absolutely crushed with, uh, yeah. uh, basically mm-hmm. with like the rubble in the building itself. And I have to admit, I cannot like see now whenever I see like an anime or a TV show where someone gets crushed by like a rock, yeah. I cannot help but think of this scene and just yell, yeah. Caesar. <laughs> Yeah, that scene that scene was heartbreaking though. I'm just like, damn, fuck. Okay. Because this is the weird thing. Like, I did not, and maybe I'm being heartless here, but I didn't get emotional when Zeppeli died in part one. I was a little sad, but I wasn't as like sad as Caesar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I kind of thought, oh no, that's sad, but it's like, yeah, yeah." is what it is, right? Yeah. (laughs) And I got a bit more upset with Jonathan dying at the end of part one, but I thought again, Mm -hmm. it was like. I wish we had more time to kind of know about him, but then, of course, we've had this, basically most of part two, spent mm-hmm. with Caesar and Jonathan just being, and not Jonathan, sorry, Joseph, just being these, like, couple of besties, essentially, yeah, <laughs> in, the right? middle, <laughs> in the middle of Europe, and... Yeah, all of a sudden he just meets this such a horrible, horrible fate. And I think the thing that set me off, like, I'm not usually one to tear up at anime. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's only been a couple of scenes where I've teared up, like, the there's a funeral scene, I won't spoil it, but there's a funeral scene of a particular character in Full mm-hmm. Metal Alchemist that got me oh. absolutely bawling. Um, that was so that was sad. devastating. It still makes me sad to oh, this day. Oh, I can't watch yeah. that the same. But we don't that's, talk about that. Oh yeah, we don't. We don't. This isn't no, sad. It's so sad, though. It's so sad. Yeah. But I mean, there's been like a couple of other, you know, scenes like that. But this one, it, it didn't make me tear up until the music started. So Wamu mm-hmm. basically escapes, and yep. Joseph and Lisa Lisa come in, and they're they're looking for Caesar. They're yelling out his name, or they're about to yell out his name. But Joseph is worried because. And this kind of got to me because it was like Mm -hmm. he didn't want to call out his name because it was like that might be, you know, he'll call out and Caesar won't reply. That was that was really hitting me. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, no. I just yeah, I just took that writing in. I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, no. And then I think the thing that set me off was when Lisa Lisa, they basically find the body underneath yeah. or they they find the blood and they find the ham on bubble and everything and yeah. lisa lisa's trying to stay strong and mm-hmm. she's like you know oh i'm sure it's fine blah 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 and then mm-hmm. she tries to light a cigarette and then joseph just simply says and that's like i think it's just perfect writing he just says lisa um your cigarette's the wrong way around it's just that small thing that I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I know I'm saying that a lot, but just like, it absolutely hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, and that then, part I'm just like, oh, fuck, yeah. okay. And then, yeah, we find out, or rather they find out that he's been crushed to death and he mm-hmm. just screams and you've got the Italian operatic music and everything. Yeah. It's so yeah. like, like it usually if it was any other anime, you'd be like, oh, it's, you know, over the top and everything. And mm-hmm. this is over the top, but it's it is, done in all the right ways. Like it's, yes, it's very melodramatic, but mm-hmm. it still hits you like a ton of bricks, like oh, yeah. out of nowhere too. Mm-hmm. You know, because I didn't expect to get so attached to him, and then I was just like, he was a good character. He yeah. was honestly a very good character. It really was. Yeah, 
Rest in peace, Bubble Boy. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, the goat. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so. the goat of season two. Like, actually, you'll see later when when we get to like certain parts why he's called oh, the goat. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, yeah. And one of the actual one of the interesting things that I never realized until that part or that episode was see if you watch the introduction or the like the whole intro. At the very end, there's a scene where Joseph ties a bandana to his head mm-hmm. and he kind of looks up to the sky and screams. Along with the song, yeah. of course. And, yeah. <laughs> like... You realise like, the bandana it is. Yeah, because at first I was like, oh, cool, Joseph's going to get a bandana. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. the next like, episode oh, I no. watched that, I was like, <laughs> he sees his bandana. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, fuck, oh, now I know whose bandana yeah. it is. <laughs> it's like, no. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Serious, uh, you know, just yell. Yeah, like, literally in my head, I'm just like, Oh, oh yeah it was just yeah it took me like i had to pause before i started the next episode i was like oh, keep it together shatsu keep it together <laughs> it's like jo- joseph and lisa lisa gonna get these guys just chill. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're gonna get so yeah. of course after that they of course go after wamu in a very gladiator like arena isn't it yeah i love that yeah, yeah. i love it so they basically agree with a entourage of i want to say vampire people isn't it just like actually, yeah, vampire, yeah. zombie-ish. I don't know. Yeah, like, like jo- just, <laughs> yeah, just like random vampire people that came out of nowhere. Yeah. And I have to admit, mm-hmm. that is a cool scene where they get yeah, ambushed scene. by like a zombie vampire person. Yeah, it's like he's like, "Oh, you can't get by me!" And then Lisa, Lisa just smacks the utter shit out of him and just yeah. walks by, like not even mm-hmm. in that like cool way. Well, it is a cool way, but like in a very calm way, she uses her scarf just yeah. to like channel her ham on into him. And yeah, the sun kung fu just obliterates this guy. You're like, Jesus. Sun fu. Sun fu, <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, yeah. um, so then, of course, that brings you on to like the A showdown where Lisa Lisa agrees to take on cars and uh, Wamu um, will take on Joseph in a kind of gladiator style battle. I have to admit uh, that that's really well done, where it's like on the edge of your seat kind of stuff, where they're both riding chariots, they're both using weapons to try and get mm. one another. And did like I have to admit, I think Wamu is by far the best pillar man. He is. He's my favorite two. out of the three. I would agree. I think he mm. is definitely the best in terms of character development because even when he gets decapitated at the end and he's kind of lying there like, oh, he still stops his like vampire people from mm. trying to attack Joseph because he's like, you know, we, we agreed a tournament, you know, or fair rules. And yeah. he, he's just such a nice man for a pillar man. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he, he's, a, he gets... he's a chill dude. Yeah. So long as he's just like, hey, so long as I get to fight you at full strength, I don't care. Yeah. That's literally him. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, after that, I was kind of like, oh, poor, poor guy. Very, like, <laughs> lawful die? evil, yeah. lawful neutral sort of, like, sort of, like, feel to him mm-hmm. if he was, like, a D&D villain, oh, yeah. you know? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. even though he kind of is responsible for Caesar's death, he can't help but feel kind of... I wouldn't say sorry for him, but it's like, at least he went out honourably. He did. Which is more than I can say for the next part, where, of course, Cars fights Lisa Lisa, but then it turned... So this is what I meant when I said earlier that he was very sneaky, in the sense that he ends up... How to put this in the nicest way possible? He ends up, like, using a decoy to basically fool Lisa Lisa before he stabs her, and then uses her legs as a guitar. Trust me, it makes uh... sense in context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Definitely does uh, use their legs as a guitar. Yeah. And then just as they think, like, all hope's lost, you know, they've lost against the Pillar Men, eh, the Germans turn up once again. And it's like, oh, okay. Fair dues. Fair dues. Yeah. And you think, okay, the Germans have saved the day. Not something <laughs> I, I usually Would say, think. but okay. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just before they're about to kill, like, all the vampires, so they've got, like, these huge, like, backpack things. <laughs> where it's, like, the UV uh, lights. Um, that release sunlight, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and yeah before of course they can stop cars he ends up getting a stone mask which has the uh, stone which he's been you know looking for and that powers yeah. him up into quote unquote the ultimate life form which yep. uh, when they say ultimate life form they basically mean a shapeshifter don't they <laughs> yeah actually though shapeshifter like oh my god like but, he was he was godlike at that point you're yeah. like oh he's actually godlike fuck mm-hmm. pretty much yeah and for some reason, Smokey Brown's there as well. Um, and so is Speedwagon. Yeah, like, <laughs> they both turn up with the Germans, and it's like, 
why are they there? And it's like, mm-hmm. the reason they're there is for exposition. Like, in a writing standpoint, it's so that um, Smokey can tell Joseph about Lisa Lisa, like, the truth about mm-hmm. her. Which, I have to yeah. admit, it's something I didn't see coming, but... Yeah, same. It, it was quite interesting. So, basically, the twist is, and I know we've spoiled it so far, but if you don't want this twist spoiled... Yeah, skip this uh, part, guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 skip ahead a couple of minutes. But, yeah, basically, it's revealed that Lisa Lisa is Joseph's mother, and yep. the reason that she is linked in with the Joestar family is because, at the end of part one, of course, we saw Irina um, escape on Dio's coffin with a baby. That baby was, of course, Lisa Lisa, or would grow up to be, and she ended up marrying, I think it was Arena's baby, wasn't it? George Yeah, so Lisa Lisa, I believe George was Arena's kid, and then he he at least Mm -hmm. married into the family, that's what it was. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then he was like a pilot in the RAF, but he ended up like... (laughs) This is the weirdest thing. It's like he ended up like researching corruption within the British RAF, and then he ended up yep. like finding vampires instead. <laughs> probably yeah, not. Pretty much. Yeah, probably not the ideal situation. So of course, mm-hmm. the vampire ended up killing George, um, Lisa Lisa's husband, and she gets mad. She kills the vampire, but of course, people don't believe. You know vampires are a thing for some weird mm-hmm. reason but yeah it ends up she has to go into like kind of exile which i have to admit of all the places italy not a bad place to exile mm-hmm. <laughs> very very nice food very nice you know views i, I think i think she shows well um yeah. so of course flashing forward i think she basically oh no uh, Smokey doesn't get the chance he keeps trying to tell joseph and joseph's like not now there's literally an oiled up god shape-shifting right in front of me can <laughs> this wait <laughs> yeah can this wait Smokey? he's like oh, okay man. they have the final fight where mm. joseph fights the well fights cars which is ironic he's fighting cars in the air Yep. Pun of the night. To which they end up crashing into mm-hmm. a volcano. Schroheim again comes out of nowhere and manages to save Joseph from like blowing up and crashing his plane. And in the ongoing battle, he ends up losing his arm, which is very significant for later parts, but we'll, we'll, yep. we'll get to that next time. Oh my god. <laughs> um, no, it's that it's yeah. oh my god moment. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Joseph ends up losing his arm. Schroheim is a like metal heat on the ground um yeah just like everything's going wrong and cars basically has them cornered but then what he doesn't realize is he's standing on like a very very active volcano which propels him into the sky and like i've said this before you know saying oh i don't know where the series or this part especially is going but this was especially at the end i was like how's he gonna get you know how's he gonna defeat him and then i think it's just by fluke that he manages mm. to distract him long enough so that it hurls him into the atmosphere. And it really distracts yeah. him as these um, rocks fly at him. And I do love the fact that, you know, like, Joseph is just like, you know, he's like, oh, is this part of your plan? How did you plan all of this? And he's like, uh, he's just thinking to himself, oh, I, I didn't actually plan it, but it'll he drive didn't. him nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's, literally, uh, that's literally us in stream. Like, there's like, yeah. I can relate to that part so much. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I have friends ask me, it's like, oh, like, how did you mm-hmm. plan that? I was like, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it just sort of happened. <laughs> it's so good, though. Because after that, so when good. they said, like, oh, did you plan this from the beginning? I'll admit, I rolled my eyes thinking, oh, okay, come he on. That, that is, I'm like, that is like so, you know, that's genius, like, contrived. Yeah. Um, no, I just mean like when they said like oh did you plan it and he's like oh yes i planned it but then when he said like oh no i didn't actually <laughs> but he doesn't know that i was like oh my god that is genius that is amazing like it's so a round of applause like i was fantastic <laughs> so of course then it ends and it's like you think oh god they've killed off another joe star and i thought like that was going to be the running theme yeah which, for which, this. which is really sad the way yeah. joseph went out i'm like fuck right yeah. I'm like really Cause I, that's, I, how I, that's how I felt. Yeah, and I was just sitting there, just like, all right, okay, this is this is going to be a sad boy series, isn't it? <laughs> and then, yeah, definitely. Of course, it flashes forward like a couple of 
months, I want to say, later, Mm -hmm. um, where Joseph basically ends up coming to his own funeral, (laughs) where it turns (laughs) out, like, plot twist. It sounds weird out of context, guys. It sounds weird, yeah, but it turns out, of course, he wasn't uh, killed at the end. And, yeah, it ends up that his new wife, uh, Susie Q, didn't actually tell anybody that he was still alive. She forgot to, like, send (laughs) out the email. (laughs) Yeah, and he just goes mental. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I have to admit, it's quite a bittersweet ending, isn't it? Because yeah. it's like Joseph and um, Susie Q live happily ever. This is kind of done in like a voiceover, mind you, uh, kind of yeah. as a really quick like summary. But it ends mm-hmm. up, they basically tell you what happened. So Lisa Lisa ends up telling Joseph that she's his mum, which makes a particular scene earlier on um, very awkward. Yep. But you're going to have to watch nice. it. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's, <laughs> That's all we're all saying. Yeah, That's yeah, it. That's you'll all have to watch nice. it. Of oh, course, God. Smokey Brown becomes a mayor, I think, of the city. Yes, yes. He yeah, does. Of Georgia, that? I believe. I think it was Something like that, yeah. Something like that, yeah. 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 Speedwagon, unfortunately. I felt, I have to admit, that kind of got me. Um, when they killed off passes, Speedwagon, yeah. yeah. Because as I said, I found him annoying in part one, but part two, I felt he just he he struck nice. the right balance. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he, he was, was, was nice. in part two. Yeah, he was. A, he was a good boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, Stroheim ends up getting killed. At, and this is like a really weird one. He ends up getting killed at Stalingrad, which yes. is a very weird insert <laughs> into it Jojo. Is. It's like. Yeah, I remember learning about Stalingrad and seeing the German with a Tommy gun coming out of his pelvis, you know? Or not a Tommy yeah. gun, a Gatling gun, but you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, why not, Iraqi? Why not? And of course, it kind of it sums it up and then it flashes forward years later where quite possibly this is probably my favourite ending out of any of the parts so far where he is basically going abroad and I have to admit he says like a borderline on PC thing where yep. he basically yep. blames Japanese people because his daughter has moved abroad and married a yep. Japanese person and he's so yep. distraught that he hasn't seen his daughter in mm-hmm. so long that he just like shoves into like this random Japanese guy on the airport and it's like Joseph you yeah. stop being a dick <laughs> it's like it's like, Joseph, what the yeah. fuck, bro? Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, but still, they make good gadgets. And then he's got a Walkman in his hand and he clicks it. And as soon as he clicks it, it just cuts to black. And yeah. bloody stream, the uh, theme starts playing. And see that, yeah. like, that is by far my favourite ending. I thought that is That's just awesome perfect. Ending. Yeah, Th- this is by far one of my favourites, I have to say. But of course, Quite it cute. leads on to a very interesting cliffhanger where it's revealed that both a very familiar villain might still be alive, which, spoilers, Mm -hmm. he is, and we are introduced to our new Joestar, that of course being Jotaro Kujo. Um, Jotaro, (laughs) pretty much. is something we will definitely be talking about in length next time. (laughs) But yeah, kind of to summarise, like, how would you summarise this part? Like, in in my own two cents? Yeah, uh uh-huh. Like, in your opinion. Oh, like, I thought this part two was excellent, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, both with the story writing, with the characters, with everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't too fast. It wasn't too slow. You know, it didn't, you know, do the thing with, I'm not calling out a certain anime yet again, where they introduce, like, way too many characters in one episode. And you forget, like, maybe, like, I'd say a good 80% of them, other than, like, the main character and two of his friends or something. Yeah. Uh, It didn't make that mistake, which was very good. I think there was a good amount of uh, characters like uh, that they introduced, and even when they would introduce new characters, like it would only like be like what one or two people, right? Mm-hmm. For like any major characters in the story. Yeah. Other than that, um, you know, Araki did definitely build up on his mistakes from part one, mm-hmm. and you know, he didn't make it too slow. You know, like he made things make a bit more sense. You know, not calling out the whole pluck thing. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> other than that, yeah, it's definitely it's probably my favorite part out of the uh, current parts that have been animated so far what about Mm -hmm. you satsu yeah i would agree with that i think Mm. that part two at least for the ham on parts and Mm. you'll pro like for those listening you'll realize what i mean next time (laughs) when i say the ham on parts but yeah yeah, yeah. i feel as if between this and part four i feel as if they're both amazing in their own rights but part two Mm. for me was what got me into jojo's bizarre adventure Part one, mm-hmm. as I said last time, was a very serviceable part. It was very good, but it, it just felt like really standard. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel as if it was like anything special compared to what everyone was hyping it up to be. 
Yeah. Whereas part two, like from start to finish, it just kept going on and on and on. And it was like, you know, from one set piece to the other. And I feel as if the charisma of Jon- eh, Jonathan, of Joseph, really held this part together. I think mm. if we had a character that was the same as Jonathan in this part, I don't think this would have worked. I think yeah. if Joseph acted any other way, like if he acted too, you know, gentlemanly or too arrogant. Joseph is arrogant, and I mean, there's so he much is. we haven't covered. <laughs> like, I mean, between him predicting, you know, what people are going to say by saying, your next line is going to be, to... Oh. Which is never explained, by the way. Um, yeah. That is a power that is never explained, which I do yeah. like, I have to admit. I think, I think it's quite cool. Mm-hmm. Um, between that and throwing pasta as a weapon, yep. which again... Oh, no! <laughs> that whole scene. Yeah, and eating, like, black pasta and things like that. It's just, there's yeah. a lot in it that just really endears, and I feel as if he carries the majority of it. But at the same time, even the side characters are a lot of fun. Um, as we said, Caesar's great. The Pillar Men, to an extent, they're also really entertaining, Stroheim, mm-hmm. he he's he's there. <laughs> nah, Stroheim is great. Um, oh, I love Stroheim. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's like how how to explain like how good Stroheim is without being like, huh. yeah, you know, <laughs> he yells what I, a lot. What I realized actually about Stroheim while mm-hmm. like you know picturing him in my head, yeah. Satsu. Mm-hmm. Guys, picture if you want to know like if for all those who don't watch JoJo, for all you guys who want to know what Stroheim actually looks like without Google searching him. Mm-hmm picture if guile was a german and he had like all these cyber cybernetic upgrades that's literally what stroheim looks like he even has the, the exact same like haircut as guile from street fighter you know what that is the perfect description yeah and he's just as muscular <laughs> but he doesn't yell sonic boom every five minutes he yells his own name you know yeah and, and german engineering yeah yeah german engineering <laughs> you fools <Yeah>. um <laughs> he, he yells a lot but in the best way possible mm. <laughs> and of course you've got Speedwagon, who is a boy he doesn't do that much like he's there but like in the best way he's not like an exposition he, machine compared yeah, to part one he's like a he's like a very he's like a father figure he's literally yeah. the mm. father that joseph never had which is what yeah. I, I i like to see in him right because i'm just mm-hmm. like okay like i knew your grandfather mm-hmm. and um you know mm-hmm. i i want to help out his grandfather in any way i can because mm-hmm. my grandfather and him were best friends right so yeah and like that that's what i love about him I was like okay i kind of like that they took that direction mm-hmm. with him you know and i do like that kind of bittersweet ending where it's like he ends up passing away they don't show you mm-hmm. but they basically show you him walking into the sunset essentially saying like you know oh he died a bachelor and also arena died but the thing was it's like they died i think relatively peacefully like arena dies like with her family all around her in a very mm-hmm. peaceful way and it's it nice in that yeah it's nice in that respect and it's like a nice send off like I, I feel as if if you watch part one and two you could technically just end uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and just like you be could. like that was, a, that, was a, that was a nice you know <laughs> it was it's a nice, nice like little wrap up right so. yeah and then of course part three gets teased and you're just like ooh <laughs> pretty <yeah>. much <laughs> you're like i wonder what joseph's kid is like you know <laughs> yeah oh yeah exactly it leaves yeah. just enough breadcrumbs exactly yeah. but i have to admit like if you're still kind of if you've listened to this and you're still thinking should i watch jojo's bizarre adventures like at least give like if you can power through part one to give the kind of basis to the world mm-hmm. um and you stick with part two mm-hmm. then yeah I I would say part two is definitely worth watching. It's weird, it's over the top, but you know what? It has, like, a lot of, like, your your typical, like, anime tropes in it, but in the best way possible, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I think so. Oh, Like, they do it right. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I love it for it. So, yeah, of course, next time we will be talking about part three, which I am... I've got my ranting. <laughs> I've got my ranting script ready for that one. So. I'm ready to stand proud for this one, man. Oh, it is going to be a good one. Is, <laughs> yeah, so get your ham on clackers ready because we are going in fast. We are going to be training yes, for that are. one. Yes, we are. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, Blowfish, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, tonight to yeah to basically talk about quite possibly one of the highlights of jojo's bizarre adventure at least for the animated series anyway of course man it's a pleasure uh having you having you have me help you out with this you know and i love talking jojo you know me (laughs) oh yeah absolutely (laughs) so where can these uh joe bros and the audience uh find your content of course guys if you want to know who i am and where i am i'm mainly on twitch right now uh twitch.tv slash blowfishman tv all one word 
Uh, on Mondays, you know, I, I'm I'm a lawyer. Wednesdays, I try to kill gods and like different kinds of monsters. And on Fridays, I'm at my night job, you know, killing zombies. So if that appeals to you in any sort of way, give me a follow. You know, we just hit 400. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to celebrate that. But hey, mm-hmm. twitch.tv slash blowfishmantv. That's the place to be, guys. That was one hell of a resume, can I just say? <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try, man. I'm always trying something new whenever I introduce yeah. myself. It's oh, a- absolutely. <laughs> yeah and if you want to check out more of my content you can catch me on twitter instagram tiktok youtube and of course twitch under the name satsunami42 if you want to check out more podcast episodes then you can catch me on anchor spotify and all good podcast distributors under the name chat tsunami we also upload um, these episodes to YouTube as well, in case you want to have, just basically have some background noise as well. So yeah, feel free to check them out on YouTube under Satsunami42. Once again, thank you all so, so much for listening to this very special episode. As always, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.